I think this country is ready for a change. The people are crying out for somebody that says, we are with you, we are the movement of the workers. We've got over 700,000 people have already signed up to this campaign, Enough's Enough. On the 1st of October, we need to mobilise those 700,000 people and more on the streets, protesting against this government, their mini-budget, their outrageous attitude of stealing money from working people and transferring it into the hands of the billionaires. We're not putting up with it anymore. You out on the streets on the 1st of October. We are not accepting this rigged system anymore. The cruelty that has been inflicted on our people, on our class. That's what this campaign is about with our five key demands. A real pay rise, slashing bills and bringing utilities into public ownership, ending food poverty, guaranteeing decent housing for all, and finally making the super rich pay their fucking share of tax that they should always have been paid. Us. We've got the multinational corporations against us. We've got the government against us. But we're saying bring it on. We're not frightened here. And if you want to take on your NHS workers, we'll fight them. And if you want to take the posties on, we'll fight them. And if you think you're going to let the old people go cold this winter, we'll fight them. You're going to see our members out on strike. You're going to see railway workers out on strike. You're going to see them come. Are you going to be there with us on our picket lines? The working class is back. We are here. We're not going to go away. We're going to change this country. We're going to change our society. Enough is enough. King's Cross. 12 o'clock. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you again. Um, back out on the lines. How you doing? I'm very well, thanks. Um, since we last met you, you know, yes. there was a lot going on that day. The, the flights never went ahead, but we seem to be opening up ourselves to a whole new world of issues. What, what are you thinking at the moment, and what's the Jackdaw's take on enough is enough? Yeah, um, as regards the strike wave, uh, it's, it's, it's amazingly encouraging. Uh, it's the biggest strike wave in decades uh, and, 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 and all the different uh, sections of workers that take taken part in it, in it, um, it, it, it sort of brings back, revives hope, rev revolutionary hope. Charlotte, Sam, nice to meet you. Thanks for agreeing to chat. Um, right. So what's brought you out today? Um, well, I'm sick of fucking living in a, one of the richest countries in the world and not being able to afford anything. I'm a teacher in a school and we've been told that we're not allowed to put the heating on and we're having to tell children's parents to make sure that their children have layers of clothes because we can't afford to put the heating on. So it's not, it's like across the board, all generations of people that are suffering other than 1% and I just think it's disgusting. <laughs> What's brought you out today? So I'm part of a group called the Architects Climate Action Network and we campaign for changes in the construction industry and the impact that energy crisis and especially fuel poverty has in our industry is huge. As an architect, as a young person, as a renter yeah. as well, um, wanting to turn up and put my body out there and show that um, that there is a different way to be <laughs> and put pressure on governing powers who make decisions. The architecture industry is an exclusive industry as it stands. It costs a lot to go to university. It's traditionally an uh, old white man's club. If it was more inclusive, we'd be a part of designing and creating more inclusive spaces. Um, because at the moment, because it's so exclusive, that's how we've ended up in a society where there's unequal housing, poor distribution of housing, um, bad quality housing. What we're out here today is uh, I've got three jobs currently and uh, give it like five or six years ago I thought those jobs were going to give me expenses to allow me to go on holiday and extra things like that actually have just allowed me to live. I've got three children, I'm a teacher, I run a landscaping business and I'm just completely fed up with the way the country's run at the moment. Uh, the main thing for me is people just accepting the fact that fuel prices go up moaning but not doing anything about it so I'm joint with everybody else here today for different rallies just for freedom really.
family, so people representing different walks of life uh, and different paths are going along, but we come together united as one and basically against the government because at the moment it's an absolute mess. If you're working a nine to five job and you're working in the supermarket, working as a nurse, you're working as a firefighter, you should have enough to pay your bills, enough to pay everything you've got in the household as well as expenses. You shouldn't be having to pull extra shifts and do extra hours for just to survive really. <laughs> idea to show that, that the strength of the group really oh lovely lovely and so the idea is that we're s smashing through this so this is kind of a, an abstract flower or a, or a sunburst and the idea is to protect nature and to punch through lovely yeah you know, yeah the, what is going on? I'm not the most articulate person. No, that was perfect. <laughs> and I think you might, especially if you're exile Lambeth, you must have a particular sort of pride in the protest a couple of years yeah. ago, setting up in Vauxhall Gardens and Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. We're, we're an amazing world. If I, not, not me, but you know, uh, we have got some amazing people in our group. We've done amazing things. And I'm so proud of exile Lambeth. I really am. We, and for instance, we have Shell on our manor. We've got their headquarters in yeah, Lambeth, yeah. so they're a particular bugbear of ours, and, and we're constantly um, going around there. Oh, you can hear us as well. <laughs> Hi, Ash. Uh, thanks for agreeing to chat to us. Um, I see you've got Stop the Jackdaw. Um, would you be able to just tell us a bit about what that is? Yeah, absolutely. So we're here with Fossil Free London. Um, we want to make sure that the cost of living crisis is linked with the climate crisis at all times because they are both killing us and they're both manufactured by the same problems. So the fossil fuel industry is earning billions and billions in profit and Shell, one of the biggest oil and gas companies, has proposed a new gas field in the North Sea called Jackdaw. That is why I'm here dressed as a jackdaw to say stop jackdaw. The government has recently given permission for Shell to start drilling this gas field in the North Sea, despite the fact that it would create more emissions than the whole country of Ghana. It's in the context of the fossil fuel industries raking in profit as our energy bills are like going haywire. So it's just like we're saying no, we're saying stop jackdaw, no new oil and gas, and we need a just transition with like safe, clean energy and Jackdaw is just completely like running over that. Some people have claimed that by drilling for more fossil fuels um, we can address the climate, the, sorry, the cost of living crisis but obviously that's totally untrue. The fossil fuel industry has been rigging the system for decades. They're raking in government subsidy, they're not paying their taxes and the fact is that a tiny bit of gas sold on the world, global markets from the North Sea is not going to do anything to change the system. We need to change the system. We need renewables, we need community energy, we need public ownership uh, and we need justice and fossil fuels are the opposite of that. They're completely counter to that. Did you just tell us a bit about sort of what this women's strike is and how it relates to the Enough is Enough campaign? Okay. Well, first of all, it's probably the only women's banners on the entire... I mean, I haven't been around, but people have been coming and telling us we're the only women's banner. And that's really a bit sad because the whole point about what's happening in the world is that women everywhere are paying the highest price for the cost of living crisis. So the point of our banner is to make it very clear that we have a right to strike too. But the difference is we're unwaged. We've never had a wage for the caring work that we do. We grew out of the Wages for Housework campaign back in 1972. We're actually celebrating our 50th anniversary. Obviously, you've got this lovely uh, trade union banner behind you. I was wondering if you could just sort of explain to us some of the stuff on it. Yeah, look, this is a trade council banner, which is basically a lot of unions in one constituency, i.e. this one is uh, Battersea and Wandsworth. So you've got all the unions uh, there that come together to organise and look after the workers within that constituency. We've supported lots of different campaigns, not just in this country, but we've also looked after people in other countries like the Bangladesh garment workers before that factory went down a long time ago. We donated something, something in the region of 150,000, so it's a lot of money. And we do a lot of good work within the community as well.
can you just maybe talk us through the sign a little bit? Yeah. Um, this is the uh, RMT banner for What To Do branch. And um, the, the female face is a very popular man of RMT, which is Bob Crow. And that's Greg Tucker there. And that's our What To Do station. And that encompasses everything about RMT and our union and the train. Yeah, and is it important to have like a bit like a nice banner, a big yeah. banner when you're coming out to the pickets? Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very important because that showcases our branch and what our branch is all about. And this that give a flair into our picket line. Because anytime we bring out our banner across every demo, people seem to love it and it's a very beautiful banner. Well we love the banner too, mate, too. Yeah, and thanks for nice thanks for one. chatting. And what are you saying to people by having the banner? Yeah, well, what we're saying is having this banner, this banner it shows people that we represent the, the, the people in this constituency. Uh, and it's totally unionised. Uh, so this represents the thousands of workers and, and, and people that are living in the borough because we don't just do the work, because obviously we want you know, better living conditions for people that are living in Battersea and Wandsworth. And we're speaking with these, those people, obviously, because we want to work with them yeah. to improve the constituency that we represent. So that's what this represents, the hundreds, thousands of people in Battersea and Wandsworth. Obviously, Zara Sultana is a big, uh, big fan of Enough is Enough. We see uh, Mick Lynch was polling higher as like a potential Labour leader than Keir Starmer. Do you think standing here now we're seeing the sort of start of a new political party potentially? I really, really hope so. I really hope so. There's so many smart, oh, uh, this, 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 there's so many people who could do a better job than who we have in power now. And they're just not given the chance or, 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 the, or, the, or the means to do so. Because it seems like the only way you can get anywhere is by having big, 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 big money backing your, backing your name. And yet we end up with people like Keir Starmer, who just seems to want to apologize for every single thing that Labour does. It's ridiculous. Like, there is no front. Um, it's to end the shame of food poverty in this country. It is an absolute fucking disgrace that there are more food banks than there are McDonald's branches in this country. Make some noise if you're for them. I just support a party which doesn't come from Eton. Everybody says that, oh yeah, we got these people and that people. Actually, they've certainly got the most diverse people. Fair enough, I completely agree from people different walks of lives. But if you actually look at it, 75% of the people at the moment in Parliament are actually people from private education. <laughs> Mick Lynch is a difficult one because I think what people are trying to follow is some sort of movement but I think he's actually trying to form his own political party so what he's doing is he's using the, the fact that people are basically latching on to him for what he says is correct uh, and then he's going to branch away from that as form his own political party um, basically up his own ass so I do believe in some of what he's saying um, and I agree with some of the statements he makes however I think he's using this platform to push his own political party and I reckon the next couple of years uh, he's going to go for it and then obviously all the people which have followed these events are going to go going to follow behind him and vote for him basically so I don't know if he's the man but if anybody's standing up against these people in charge and I, I fair play to him at the moment because nobody else seems to be doing much. What do you hope that enough is enough is going to do for the unions? Well I think enough is enough has uh, come up with similar to the Corbyn uh, yeah, phenomena if that's what you want to do uh, you want to call it. I'm not too sure who set it up or anything like that. I'm not too bothered about that. But what it's doing is bringing the arguments uh, to, you know, people that don't normally get involved with politics. And it's also encapsulating the, the young people as well. I think this campaign has done quite a good job in um, creating connections and unity between a lot of different causes and reasons for frustration. So, yes, it's very much about... Um, railway strikers, postal worker strikers, but it's also about energy crisis and people living. It's also about gender inequality and inequalities with, between different ages. And so by bringing together all of these like really fundamental crises, I think more people can recognise that something needs to change. <laughs> As regards enough is enough, unfortunately, you know, it's very much under the control of the trade union bureaucracy and it really needs to adopt direct action uh, tactics.
much it's like the don't pay campaign are doing uh, which is a far more radical campaign I think you know uh, which I fully support Do you feel more supported in these recent strikes? Oh yeah, hundred percent so. Uh, you know, I've got even walking over from Unity House, which is a few streets down, just to come and give support to uh, our cleaners here. Normally, you, you no no one would even approach you to say anything, even if you got your auntie uh, uh, stuff on. But I went over to support the uh, the cleaners, and I was stopped six times just going a couple of streets away saying that we support your, your strike. They didn't know it was about a cleaner strike, but they knew that we was on strike for, for, for good reason. Even at Glastonbury, I did Glastonbury, right? And I took a load of workers there, they volunteer up there, and we put, you know, we put T-shirts on them with an RMT, and we've had fuck Boris on it, excuse the language. This year, we thought we was gonna get demonized because we put a strike on right in the middle of Glastonbury. But at the end of the day, when we got there, they wanted us to go up on stage, they wanted to support us, and there's hundreds of thousands of people there, and we didn't get a negative response. There's a lot of actions over London today. Is there anyone, like any reason in particular, you've come out to the Enough is Enough one here at King's Cross? Um, this was the one that we saw mainly online. I wasn't actually, we weren't actually aware of the other ones going on around, 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 around the city today. It does feel like there's a bit of an effort online to sort of squash any chat about protests I've noticed like you share certain stories about certain events happening like this they tend to get less coverage than if you just put up a picture of yourself looking sexy or whatever so it's strange so it is interesting there's so much going on around London yeah this is and we're 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 we're, we're, we're fairly um onto these things yet we haven't seen anything else about any other protests or march in London today you know what would be like an immediate sort of I don't know, answer from the government, some sort of response from someone. What, what would make Leave. you feel better? Leave. That's it. I mean, get There's the fucking nothing. Tories out, but even Labour, they're like, that's right, policies going on since the 90s anyway. So like Maggie Thatcher said, Tony Blair was her biggest success. And that just shows you exactly where our government is. Even our left government is not looking, it's not socialist, and it's not looking after the people. And the people on the ground that are working so hard can't afford anything. They can't afford childcare, they can't afford food. They're having to make really like irrational, like irrational, rational decisions about survival. I just think that's horrendous and it just needs to stop. And it was very clear in COVID, it was the carers, you know, who were on the front line. They didn't withdraw their labor, but imagine what would have happened if they had, you know, the deaths would have been horrendous, they already were. There's been no acknowledgement. I mean, all that's happened is that they've gone on business as usual, taking money from us to prop up institutions, to, to pay shareholders, to increase billionaires' bonuses. More important that they have a tax break and then that the people who are on universal credit who barely survived COVID actually get the money that we need to live. Yeah, that's, that's what we're demanding. I think so many people are waking up to kind of the meritocracy that we're actually witnessing with our government at the moment. They're not on the side of the people, it's plainly clear that that is the case. We're going in towards what I view as being a technocracy now, where democracy is being completely overridden by high-tech 
industries which are taking jobs, uh, we just can't afford to carry on going the way we're going. Like this guy's saying, he's got to work three jobs now to like kind of keep a roof over his head and feed his children. The world shouldn't have to be that way. It can, it can be fairer. The drip down economy that the Tories are talking about is absolute rubbish. I'm yeah. not going to swear. Absolute rubbish. Doesn't work, never has worked. Can't just stop big oil now. I'm not here for XR. I've got to say that. I'm not here for XR. Because um, we can't stop oil because it will just be too much of a shock to the system. That's exactly what they want. They want us to say stop oil, stop this, stop that. But look at what happened with the late, latest blowing up of the, uh, the, the gas pipeline. Yeah, Nord Stream 1 and 2. Again, you know, you can't just cut the supply off. We end up in a situation where we're going to end up with famine. And we don't want to go that route. And unfortunately, I can see that happening in Europe within the next year. And I don't want that to happen. But I'm the Labour by Keir Starmer. Do you think these guys, would we be seeing anything different in I your opinion? I think it would be slightly different. It would be slower. I think it's quicker under the Tories because the Tories have always been about big business, big tech. Okay, they've always been trying to push the little man out. NHS, for instance, they've always wanted to privatise the NHS. It's that way because I think people actually have like a cognitive distance where they're like, they're like, they know, you know, like, like you have to be in a room. I think under Labour it would have been slower, but I think the people at the top with all the money anyway, they're always going to be pushing whether left or right. I don't think left or right politics is working for anyone anymore. I think we need a new, we need a new injection of something new. We need a third way. You know what I mean? Yeah. To balance out the other two. My, my answer to everything would be to get somebody in charge who actually knows the people who's actually been in that predicament themselves. And people which, okay, they've earned money through getting a big company, but they pay the taxes and they show us what they're doing. As opposed to people which go through Eton, just graduate, they've done nothing to boards. Like Liz Truss has done nothing. She's just got on a win and ended up in, uh, just ended up in Parliament. Brother, what do you make of the protest today? Well, I don't have not much to say, you know, just enjoying it, you know?